Welcome to the phylogenetics tutorial where I'll be going over how to do this assignment. First of all, you can find the assignment under your uh, TA's Canvas page on assignments and it'll prompt you to download assignment number three, phylogenetics. So the purpose of this is to understand how we can use genetics to analyze evolutionary relationships of organisms. In discussion, we looked at the relationships of different strains of Ebola. For this assignment, you'll be looking at the West Nile virus. So first, you need to obtain your sequences that we'll be looking at. So you can do this by scrolling all the way down to part three of your assignment. And here are all the sequences that we'll be looking at. Now, the sequences are divided into groups based on your last name. So, for example, my last name starts with Z. So the only sequences that I'm going to be looking at this assignment are listed here. Now make sure when you're looking for your sequences in this giant block of text, make sure the name and the date, if there is a date, match. So you're using the correct one. Now uh, what's really nice is that all the sequences are linked. So once you find the right sequence that you're using, for example, if I'm, if I'm need Romania 1996, just click on the following link and it'll bring you to the NCBI page so you don't have to search it um, yourself. So just to give you an idea of how to do this, I'm going to go ahead. The first one is JESSA14 and luckily it's the same for everybody so uh, everyone can benefit from this. So here's JESSA14 on the list. I'm going to go ahead and open this and it'll open this page, Japanese encephalitis virus. So in order to run the programs, you need all the sequences to be in FASTA. Uh, FASTA is a text-based format for representing either nucleotide sequences or peptide sequences, commonly used in bioinformatics. So it's really just a format. Um, you can get the FASTA sequence by clicking FASTA. And then all you need to do is copy all of this. And then, like in class, we're going to use a text editor. So for Max, we have text edit. And for Windows, you guys are going to be using Notepad. So here I have text edit open. I'm going to go ahead and paste the sequences. It looks a little funky, but if you make it big, um, it fixes it. So Again, we can get rid of this and just name it Jessa 14, kind of like what we did in class. Make sure that there are no spaces within any of your sequences. So when you're doing the next sequence, go ahead and put the next sequence right here. Don't, don't, um, have another space in between that or anything like that. And make sure at the end of your last sequence, make sure there's no space. So get rid of that when you're going through it. So all you have to do is um, go through all the sequences and paste them until you have a file that kind of looks like the one that we were working with in class, like this Ebola one where you have all the sequences one after another for each organism. So I'm not going to go ahead and paste all of them, but I want to show you and remind you how to save this. All you have to do is go to Format, Make Plain Text, and that'll change it. And then you're going to do File, Save, and then I'm going to save this as West Nile Virus. I'm going to save it on my desktop, and then hit Save. So remember, we need the files to be in TXT format. If you're using Notepad, you don't have to do any of these extra steps. Usually, it automatically saves it in TXT for you. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to align your sequences using Clustal X. So you can download Clustal X at home by clicking on this link, and it'll bring you to 
this page right here. So there are a lot of different links as you can see so it's kind of confusing. If you have a Mac you want to go ahead and download this one. It's the larger, larger file. And if you have a Windows you want to go ahead and download this one. It's like the larger file compared to this one. So I have a Mac. I'm going to download this one and it takes a little bit so luckily I'm just I already downloaded it in advance and I can go ahead and open up my folder and here's Clustal X so go ahead and open Clustal X perfect so then we want to load our sequences so I'm going to go file load sequences and I saved it on desktop so I don't give any answers away I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same um, Ebola document that you guys did in class so I'm just gonna open up Ebola here are all the sequences and then to align the sequences and find where um, where the common regions are you're gonna hit alignment and hit do complete alignment so then you can save it um, save the DND and the ALN. Hit OK. So this generally takes a pretty long time. So that we're not just staring at a blank screen. I'm just going to stop the video right here and I will pick up when the sequences are loaded. So I'll be right back. Okay. And we're back. So finally, it finished aligning all the sequences. So now we can continue and we can actually calculate the genetic relationship of the sequences by clicking trees and then draw tree. So then it prompts you to save a .ph file, which is good. So click OK. And now we want to actually view the tree that we drew using a program called FigTree. So you're going to need to download the FigTree program by going to this website right down here. So once you click on that, it'll bring you to this page right here. And so the downloads are over here. And again, it's based off of what operating system you're using. So since I'm using a Mac, I would download this one. If you're using Windows, download this one. So I already went ahead and downloaded it. Once you finish downloading it, you're gonna open up this folder. Now for Windows to open it, you're gonna have to go into the zip folder and extract everything. But for Macs, you can just directly open this. But then after you extract everything in the Windows, you're going to do the same thing and you're going to go to this lib folder and open this and then you're going to uh, activate this java jar file for fig tree. So if you're having some problems downloading fig tree or opening it, you might need to go to your security preferences and you might need to allow apps to be downloaded from anywhere because it might not be recognizing um, the actual source of fig tree. Also, you might need to download supporting Java software to actually run the program. So just keep this in mind. So when you open the fig tree program, you'll see a number of options. Make sure this rectangle tree is chosen. And so now you can click on file, open. And then you're just going to open the .ph file. And it's going to load your tree. So now you're looking at a tree showing the relationships of all the sequences. Uh, before I continue, I want to talk to you a little bit about the terminology and why we're doing this. So to do this, I'm going to reference the tree in this document right here. All right. So first, the phylogenetic tree diagram depicts the lines of evolutionary descent of different species, organisms, or genes from a common ancestor. Phylogenies are important in order to create groups of similar organisms for classification and understand the events that occurred during evolution that created these groups. Any given phylogenetic tree is a hypothesis as to the evolutionary events that led to the species we see today. 
Within the phylogenetic tree, we have nodes that represent an organism or a species. So we have two different kinds of nodes. We have terminal nodes and internal nodes. So terminal nodes are the actual organisms that we had data on and possibly exist today. Uh, these are the ones that we actually entered the sequences for. The internal nodes depict their common ancestor. So this node is the common ancestor between this organism and this group of organisms. Uh, the internal node might rec represent uh, an organism that might be extinct. So the internal node divides into branches. And these branches are the ones, the things that represent an evolutionary relationship and can often have an associated scalar, making the length of the branch indicative of time in this case. So there are two ways trees can be represented. They could either be rooted or unrooted. So most phylogenetic trees are rooted, and this one is, meaning that one branch, which is usually unlabeled, so this branch, corresponds to the common ancestor of all the species included in this tree. So when a tree is rooted, it often incorporates a distant relative to the group that you're studying. This distant relative is called an outgroup. The concept of an outgroup is very important. It gives us a reference point where we can say that everything on this side away from the outgroup has specific characteristics that make them similar. So when selecting an outgroup, you want an organism that shares a common ancestor with the group that you're studying, but is not within the group. So for example, if I were studying the group mammals, which of the following do you think would be a good outgroup? The horse, the sunflower, the cat, or the iguana? Well, first of all, the sunflower has too many characteristics in comparison to the mammal group for it to be a um, rele relevant group. So it's too different. Many, many evolutionary events occur to differentiate mammals and sunflowers from their most recent common ancestor. Therefore, the sunflower is too far removed to be relevant. Now, the horse and the cat are mammals themselves, so by definition, they cannot be an outgroup to mammals as a whole. The best choice here is the iguana, because while there are similar characteristics, such as the existence of organs, for example, the differences between the organisms define the group in question, in this case mammals, as a group. For example, mammals are defined by traits such as having fur, hair, giving live birth, and lactation, three things that the iguanas lack. These specific differences are much more useful in characterizing the group mammals. So now going back to our tree, Our outgroup here is the Marburg virus. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and reroute this so it looks like this. So now you can see two distinct lineages, the Marburg virus, which is the outgroup, and this group that we're studying, the Ebola virus group. Make sure you remember to reroute your outgroup. This is the number one mistake on this assignment. So please, please, please do not forget to do this. Now, we're pretty much done with this part of the assignment. So all you have to do is click File, Export, PDF, and then you're going to save it as your name, so, and then West Nile Virus, Tree 1. Oops. You're going to have another tree where um, you're going to add on another organism. So in order to do that, you're going to have to go back to your text file and do these steps over again with the new virus. Um, just one quick thing before I finish up. So I want to say that the tree gives you a good idea of which organisms are more closely related. So we can see Zare here, and we can say Zare Garbon 94, 
these two organisms are more closely related than Zer is to, let's say, resting. So just keep in mind that's how you're reading these trees. However, this 2004 virus right here, there, this one is equally related to Zer and Zer Garbon, or Gabin, 94. So just keep this in mind when you're looking at these trees and trying to answer some of the questions. So that's all I have for you. If you have any questions, please direct them to your TA. But otherwise, thank you for watching and good luck.